Today I'm working on this uh, 7 Series 68 plate, it's pre-LCR model and the issue we have, the headlights have been changed on this and none of which really works, um, comes up with light failure as um, both headlights have been changed and I'm going to use this, the, uh, I'm going to use the hotel machine to program and code it in and I'll show you the steps of how to code anything BMW in so to code anything in you need this wire and this one, yellow one, that goes into the hotel diagnostic machine over there and this is the main one so these all come round here, the other one comes round here, you need this one here these two that plugs into that and then comes right directly into the diagnostic machine itself and this is the other bit that connects um the other one basically from there connects all the way to this other one and that goes into the usb port here um coming on to here i've done the full scan and it says front light frontal light electronic left and frontal light electronic right they will both more or less have the same fault code it will just say not programmed because the headlights have been changed so if i go into the fault code itself and also on here as well it just tells you uh keeps on coming up with the fault so here it is it says encoding control unit is not encoded in other words it means it needs coding so what we will do is um just needs to put this in a good place because it's a bit glare there we are so that's the left side and if i come out of this and go into the other one so that's the left side and if i go into the right one see so yeah, once it's on here we are so the same same stuff we have. He's just telling us it's not a match and it's not going to show you. If I put the hazard lights on, the lights will not work. It may do, it may not, to be fair. We'll find out. So I'll put the hazard lights on and nothing's really working on this side or that side. As you can see, as you can see on there, it says turn indicator faulty. So, yeah, that's what it's coming up with. It's brought us this, telling us they're making the model and some bits and bobs and some of this is some of the coding on the vehicle itself so now he's brought this other one and it's just going to go through all the units the modules in the car uh, sends signal and then receives it back and it then moves on to the next stage for us so now it tells us uh, any control unit has been replaced you can hit yes which adds yes but i'm not going to do it i'm just gonna uh, hit no and this is the other options that we get the bit that we need is the code in here. You can do retro on conversions or car key memory, which there is a lot of other um, coding in you can do. So for instance, that one, you can, if it has got it in there, for instance, you can make the angel eyes brighter if this car had it, for instance, uh, make the display unit, you know, the ambient lighting, um, add more features to it. However, we only need this for now. So if we go into selective coding, it will highlight some of them so it's already highlighted what needs coding in um the car feels like right so parking maneuver i'm not going to do them i'm not going to do the power steering front electronic left and right that's why i need really them too it's already highlighted it you can hit replace but i just need it encoding anyway so we'll just do that for now it says driver seat module passenger i'm not bothered about them too yet um if i go back up the gearbox I'm not going to do for now, but all I'm going to do is just literally them two. And that should help with the headlights. So if I press OK, and then it's now giving us the codes for the vehicle. So nothing to worry about here. It just tells us this is the date and the time, and this kind of sets the module. Um, so if you were to go back into this module, the headlight module, it will tell you on this specific date and time it was coded and programmed and updated in other words. So front left, that's fine. And it does give you a time as well, if I remember rightly. It gives you a rough estimate time. I think it's on the next one or this one. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm not, maybe I can't see it. So let's just hit that. <clears throat> and then now it's going to look for internet uh, connection. And once it's downloaded the file, it will then 
get on to the so next. So here it is. Uh, press OK. Trying to connect to the internet. The internet's have a bit of a distance from here, but it should be fine. And here it is, downloading the file. And just so you know, some files on this on on BMs or Meg, whatever it is, it can take up to a good 20 minutes, half an hour. But luckily, this one doesn't take long, so it's giving you a rough time. 11 seconds to well, not much to download the file, not to do the coding. So everything's fine. It will automatically switch things off itself. So if I move and press OK here. So it's now telling us to turn the engine off. So, so let's move on. It'll go through every single one of these. It's a bit bizarre with this vehicle. I can't really turn it off and have the um, lights working on the cluster. It's either you turn it on or you turn it off. It hasn't got an option for just having the lights on the dash so I'll let it do it and if it doesn't like it it will then tell you to turn it off which we will do in a second so that's been successful and it's coding that one in and the other one so it has done the run power command it's turned the vehicle off itself it will also turn the vehicle on itself in a second so here we are I just go in. there you are, just code in, that's fine, that's fine, so let's turn the vehicle back on, there you go, without me doing it, and then it'll just go through everything now, as you can see everything's successful, it's happy with everything, it's coded it in, I will have a look in a second, that's the fault code, so it's going to delete all the fault codes within that system, um, once it has done, I will then uh, test the hazard lights and the lights and see if it all works. It's come out of that section and it's going on. It's going to take us completely out of the coding. So really, so they should be done. So if I put the hazard lights on and turn the lights on, and if I go out, so as you can see, Everything's working fine, the hazard lights, the lights are working, so everything's good. Here it is, it's brought us back to here. We'll just press OK. It'll update the vehicle order, and then that's it really, there's nothing much else. That's it for coding, nothing very difficult. Um, it's dead straightforward, but you've just got to be careful sometimes what you code and what you don't because it will erase some faults so like i've had it in the past i've updated them um, for instance gearbox on 7 series and then it then has triggered another problem within within the ars uh, stabilizer so what that means is so i've updated the gearbox the gearbox is fine the gearbox has now lost its mind with the vehicle stabilizer and you'll then have to go into the um ars section and kind of go on a flat surface and do another calibration so the vehicle is level it's a bit annoying but you just got to be careful what you do but it will warn you and tell you what's going to happen um sometimes it may not but you've just got to kind of read and ensure you're doing the right thing before you press okay because once it does it there's no going back really well, it's back to you so yeah you can do complete uh coding but we don't I said before, retro uh, retrofits conversion is like if you change the seats, you tell the vehicle that you've put all the seats on. It's weather, it's got that. Or if you change the suspension to springs, you you put aftermarket stuff on there. So that's where you do all the other things. And car key memory, so if I go into it, it may take a few minutes. And this is what it's called, cheat codes. I love the name for it, actually. Um, it is actual uh, cheat codes. Um, it's going to take a good few minutes to download because this car is uh, very... What can I say? It's got a lot of modules and there's a lot of things you can play about with within the car itself. So what we'll do, once that's downloaded, I will re-record again. It's downloading the file. It will take a good few minutes. Uh, so we'll just wait. It took a good, shall I say, seven minutes to download the file. And this is just telling you and warning you what will happen if you do anything. So I'm okay. Here you are. So common functions and if i flick rover you've got these other ones so if i go into common function for instance 
it will bring up everything in a second on the left and you will tell us what we can do and we can't here we are <clears throat> these are some of the functions you can enable and disable Some tire pressure warning so you, you can enable it and it will come on on there tell you what the temperature is if it does work if it's got the sensor in I'm now going into the central locking and there's like apple car play there's so many things you can activate and deactivate on this the maximum speed limit is 259 kilometers whatever that makes it miles per hour i'm not sure if i've tried to change that before it won't work it'll just come up with the gearbox fault um and you're still locked in so you'll have to put it back to normal and then code in the gearbox so it's a no-go um but yeah the tailgate switch with one button i don't recommend that leave that as is a uh, warning so like your seatbelt warning you can so let's have a look no it's not on this one but the seatbelt warning does come on one of them um and you can deactivate it so it's no longer pinging on there whether you've got the seatbelt on or not so display head up display this one doesn't have head up display as far as i know so yeah that's your car key memory section you can back it up i always recommend you back this up before you're going in, going into the cheat codes because you can mess up a lot of things programming encoding is the same as that but that'll update the module and encode it in afterwards um initial report there's nothing much on there retro fits and conversions again this will take a few minutes to come on but i'll show you what what's in there as well so here we are in the option these are the things you can do as i said driver seatbelt warning is there there's a lot of other things you can look at here so a lot of conversions you can do on this vehicle um that's the oil service languages there's, a, there's tons more to be fair so but yeah this is just for this um retrofits and conversions